Hey everybody, David Burns here. Good to be with you again. And I appreciate all the comments you guys have been leaving and I've been responding to. It's been enjoyable talking with you uh, through the comments here on YouTube. Hey, you gotta subscribe. Those of you that are watching and enjoying the videos, click on the subscribe button below, please. I looked at my statistics and it shows that 85% of you that watch my videos have not subscribed. I thought we were friends. I thought you liked me. Come on. I'm trying to reach 50,000 subscribers. Just click on the subscribe button. Nothing's going to happen. You'll just be one of my subscribers, okay? Come on. You can click on the bell and get notified each time I make a new video. Today we're going to have to work on a hive because it's starting to fall over. The stand below it collapsed right underneath of it. And the hive is just totally too congested. It's one we looked at before that we thought was gonna swarm. We checked to make sure. I've gotta do something. There's too many bees in there. I've gotta add more supers. I've gotta get it on a different hive stand. It's gonna be a really tough job. I gotta break it all the way apart down to the bottom board, remove the old stand that collapsed, put a new stand in there, level it off, and put the whole thing back together again during one of the hottest days of the season. Not looking forward to that, but we're gonna do it. And then after we get that done, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna have coffee time together. And I wanna talk to you about not quitting. All right? <laughs> I wanna quit beekeeping because I don't wanna face having to stabilize and fix that hive. I wanna quit, but I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna cowboy up and get her done. Okay, so here we go. We're getting started in our hive. We're doing a little smoking here and there. This is the big hive. You can see the stand here below it is collapsed on your left side. And I'm um, just going to have to take this apart. It's a pretty hot day. Bees are out foraging uh, really hard today. And I'm hoping this will go well. I don't know if you remember or not, but we moved the queen down. She had laid some up in my uh, top supers a little bit. And so some of that brood should be uh, capped over pretty good by now. And um, we shouldn't uh, have any problems once those bees emerge out of those cells. And then the bees uh, start putting honey once they clean those uh, brood cells out. So I'm um, going to go ahead and take our time today. We're going to... Um, take this top cover off look underneath here see the uh, I like to take the top cover off kind of gent gentle make sure that the bees are going to tolerate me and wow am I surprised all the extra wax up on top here that means the bees are really wanting to put in a lot of honey that they're and I'm looking through the frames oh my gosh this is unbelievable let me see if I can get my camera a little uh, posed a little different for you here if you remember back when we put these uh, wet supers on, I don't even think it was that long ago. I can't remember, but I'm looking down through the top. These babies are ready for harvest. They've filled them up, and now they're capped over mostly. Look at this. My gosh. Wow. Woo. <laughs> Take a look capped over honey other side oh it's beautiful wowzers that is great isn't it they're all like this all of these are the same way all right so well what we're going to do since this is one heavy filled up 10 frame super Let's just take it off. Let's get this baby out of the way. Oh, gosh. Wow. It's going to kill my back. I always like to smoke the hive. Um, it helps so much. We're going to have to do a lot of work here. We're going to need some smoke. All right. This is too heavy. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 ouch. Oh, so heavy. A little bit of comb showing where they built, uh, maybe built between frames or something, but that's okay. No problem with that. I'm going to have to check that green drone comb for that I use to capture mites. 
control my mites. It's probably ready to be taken out now, so we'll have to take a look at that. Well, let's see what we got going on here. Remember the queen laid a little bit in the middle of uh, this particular super. Uh, we've got a queen excluder below this super now, and so she's pushed down below. But let's just go ahead and make sure that uh, this looks like what we expect. I expect to see mostly nectar, maybe a little bit of brood. That, if I recall, she had a little bit of eggs laid toward the bottom of the middle sections here, just a little bit. Well, maybe there was a lot. <laughs> All right. That's a lot of brood, isn't it? But the timing is right. Let me check for eggs. Make sure there's not a queen up here. No? No, it's all nectar. There's no larvae. That's that's just where she laid the last time before I moved her down. Wow. I'm going to set this back here out of the way for a minute. I'm going to make sure, though. Uh, I'm just going to... I don't want to... I don't want to second guess myself. Let's look, just look at a few more frames here. Um... Maybe the queen had laid a lot more eggs up here than I thought before I moved her down. I can't remember anymore. Yeah, yeah there's some brood up here, but no eggs. It's, it's being backfilled with nectar as soon as they emerge. I like to see that. That tells me the queen is not up here. They're not getting any space for her to lay in ready. Yep, same thing here. Good nectar. All right, well, I'm just going to move this out of the way so that I can see a little bit better down in the, down in the super here. And I'm going to have to look at another one. Just want to convince myself the queen isn't uh, up in this box. Yep, I'm going to smoke this pretty good here. Let's take a look. I think I'll go this direction here. And uh, see what I start seeing. I'm looking uh, to make sure I've got mostly nectar and uh, no eggs or larvae. I'm 94% sure I got her down in that bottom two uh, deeps but just want to double check by looking at these frames so i'm looking to make sure i don't see eggs are larvae nope boy that's filled up with nectar where they have emerged all right well i feel good about that let me check this side same thing nectar nectar no eggs no larvae no nectar no oh, just nectar okay we're good i i i don't see anything there that would make me think the queen's up here if she was, she'd be right there putting some eggs in those cells. So uh, that's that's good. Yep, so I see the queen excluder through the hole here down in the bottom. That's a good deal. Um, let's just uh, take a look at one more while we've got the hive opened. See what's on this frame. Yeah, there's a lot of bees down there. Wow. Oh, good. Well, this is working out mostly uh, nectar. Yep, very good. Okay, I, I'm, I'm satisfied. Just a few frames there that we saw last time. They had some brood on it before we moved the queen down, so that's good. All right, so uh, I think what I'll do now is smoke the super up here. Kind of thinking about looking at this frame here because I know they stopped going that direction. I want to make sure they don't go this direction. Uh, any new uh, brood or anything? No, I was all larvae. Got a little brood down there that's capped over when she was up here, but mostly nectar. Yep, same thing here. Little brood, mostly mostly nectar. Looking for eggs to verify, and there's a good spot I could I would have eggs and I don't have eggs. You know what? When I'm up here, I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with this green drone comb. I I can't leave that in the hive, or I'll be uh, raising mites because the way this green drone comb trap works is that mites prefer the um, the green drone comb. Wow, this thing is stuck. This thing is tight. There we go. Um, good. This is mostly. Oh yeah, that's all nectar. Okay, good. No eggs. Anyway, the green drone comb is a place where when the queen uh, lays in it, the cell size makes her lay drone size, um, drone eggs. Those would be unfertilized eggs. Now, the mite prefers drones because drones have three extra days to mature in the cap cells 
and they can and that makes the allows the mite to have more um, offspring. And as you can see here, I'll bring it a little closer to you. But uh, this is in good shape. It's just now capped over. Do you see this? Wow. Let me hold it up. So the, these are all yeah these are all drones, capped over drones that probably have a lot of mites underneath there. And so I'm going to set this aside. Well, you know what? Let's get the bees off of it. There are several ways to get the bees off. Um, let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with a brush. All right, I've got my brush. So let's, uh, let me show you. If I take this frame, uh, see me position it. I'll get it down inside the hive a little bit. I'll brush the bees off down into the box itself. See what I'm doing here? Flicking them sort of. And they just, they come right off of this thing. And you can sweep this clean. <laughs> it's a clean sweep. Pretty cool. Look at that now. Now look at it. See that? Capped over drone cells. All right. We'll just set this over here out of the way. I want to make sure to put all my frames back now. And I could go get another frame to replace my drone frame. That would give me 10 frames on top. Uh, get these bees out of the way here. But I, I think what I want to do is just make it nine frames. Some of you have asked me questions if uh, you can have nine frames instead of ten in your honey supers. And indeed you can. I don't always think that it's worthwhile. But the theory is that if you put nine frames in, you, you spread them out equally. I'll do that here in a second. Um, and this... Uh, a little more space between the frames will allow the bees to build out the comb a little wider on each frame and theoretically that would make it easier to cut the uh, cappings open um, because you know sometimes if the cap if the wax isn't drawn out all the way to the edge of the wood frame uh, you have to use a little scraper to get in there and open up the cells but if you have a frame that's really wide, well, then you don't have to worry about it. It's easier to uh, uncap, open up. And so we'll go with nine in here and see if they do open this uh, up a little wider. See if they uh, build these frames out a little bit wider. It would be a good little test we can do here. They make little spacers. In fact, I have one on one of these supers. I, I saw it here. But uh, what, what I'm doing is just trying to do my best to um, space it out. Um, I don't want to leave a big gap. I want to make it where these are about an eighth more of an inch between each frame to so uh, to absorb that uh, distance of not having that extra frame in there, that tenth frame in there. So um, I'm spending a little more time here trying to get it just perfect. Doesn't have to be rocket science here. But if you leave too big of a gap, you know, they could make some strange comb in there um, in, the, in a big gap. Um, so I'm trying to make it work out just right here, visualizing it. Oh, by the way, if you use your smoker like I'm doing here, uh, keep it, I'm keeping it ha uh, pretty handy right here so that when I see bees in the way of where I want to put my hive tool, uh, I can move bees out of my way. That's what I'm using the smoker for. Looks pretty good. I like this. Let's go ahead and take this last super off. i got to get above the queen excluder with my hive tool. I want to keep my queen excluder on that deep. We'll deal with that next time around. All right, another back breaker. This has got quite a bit of nectar in it and honey. And this is really painful on a back. On a back. Unless your back's in great shape, picking up like this, these little handles, it's really tough. Uh, we've also heard some comments. Some people like plastic queen excluders. Some people like uh, metal queen excluders. I started out with metal queen excluders. And I don't know. I like the plastic ones better. I mean, I would use a metal one if that's all I had. But these things are real durable. And uh, I like the way they work. I have bent a lot of my uh, metal Queen excluders. I don't know how I bent them, a hive tool or stacking them or something, and then they, it makes a little gap where the queen can get through there. So this is, look at this, look how flexible this is. And the bees have done a great job prop, propolizing it down, but 
Just work it off like that. It's fine. Set it over here. All right, now we're down here to the deep, and what are we going to have to do? I, I just came out here actually to fix the hive stand. You know, take take it apart, put a new stand under it. But, gosh, I'm in the hive. Uh, I want to see what the queen's doing if I see any uh, swarm cells being created. Going against what I tell people to do, I can tell that I can lift up one of these frames out of the center without rolling any bees. Rolling bees is when you... Uh, pull up the frame and you can kill bees. Alright, let me take a look. I'm going to be looking for some eggs and larvae. Verifying the queen is down here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oh wow, what a nice laying pattern. Gosh! <laughs> wow! That queen, This queen is unbelievable, isn't she? Talk about your brood frames. All right, so I guess we ought to go to work uh, and uh, try to get this deep off so that we can rebuild the stand below it. I wonder if I can pick this whole thing up. That would save me some time of having to take stuff apart. I'm thinking about it. Um, it could be heavy. I I'd love to save the time, but I don't. I don't want to break my back. Maybe just. Maybe I should just try it and see what it feels like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Where will I put it? I'll just put it right there. Probably. Yep. Uh, the bottom board should come with me. Oh no! Gosh, it's way too way too heavy. Way too heavy. Way too heavy. <laughs> We're gonna take this baby apart. Oh my gosh. See, I like the smoke between the boxes when I separate them. Get some smoke in there. Some of you may not do that. It helps calm the bees, actually, when you lift that box off. This box is stuck and heavy. My back is hurting. Wowzers. All right. Now we're down to the bottom, finally. Woo, making our way down. Way to go, bees. Thanks for not being mad at me. All right, let's just see if we can get this whole thing out of the way. I don't want to leave it where the bees can see the front entrance. So I'm going to tilt it, and that way the bees won't be drawn to fly back behind me and land in it. Here's the broken hive stand, as you can see. And stay out. <laughs> Bring a new one in. All right. That's a good place. Let's take our bottom deep with the I'm just fortunate that the bottom board is so propolized it's staying on just stuck on there all right let's take this other deep that I broke my back with the first time break my back again wow very good let's put some supers on which super goes next oh I'm gonna put this new super on oh nope yep it's the same one that I had do I want to leave that one there you know what? I need to put my queen excluder on. Forgot that. Let's take this off. Hold up. Put this one over here for now. You can put them up on your on their sides on the front like that, and I, and it doesn't really uh, kill bees when you set them flat like in the grass or something. All right. Uh, let's put the queen excluder on, and I want to use this new super. This is one that I've taken honey out, so it's a wet super. And I'm going to put this wet super, that's the one we had nine frames in, remember? I'm going to put it right above. Now, normally I top super, but since I'm using a queen excluder, I don't have to worry about the queen getting up in there. I usually use a full super as my queen excluder if I'm not using a queen excluder. I'll let my super do that if it's full, but this one's with a queen excluder. I'm going to put that empty box right on top. And we'll put that one there, and then we'll put the full one that breaks my back to pick up on the very top. I'll come back and harvest it in a few days. Gosh, it's heavy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, just crash landing on there. Sorry about my camera angle. I, I can't change it. My hands are filthy, but with honey all dripping on my gloves. I like wearing my gloves on a project like this. I can just keep working and, and just speed up if I have to. The job is done. Woo-hoo. All right, people. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. 
I got three supers on both of these hives. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, yep. And they are making some honey. Mission accomplished. Hey everybody, good to be with you for coffee time. Now that we got that hive all fixed, whoo, that was a job. <laughs> um, I have to film and, and, t and do my video work uh, I try to do it earlier in the morning, but I didn't get a chance to because I was busy this morning. So when I do it like this, I'm constantly watching that way for customers coming and going. And if I see a customer, I've got to stop filming. And uh, so I'll, I'll be looking down there and making sure no customers are, are approaching. Um, anyway, um, good to be with you for coffee time. Uh, look at my coffee mug today. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It says long at the top see long lane he twirled around honeybee farms has our website on the bottom a friend of mine made this for us and it's the only one that i have he said he could make more i think but uh anyway he gave me this as a sample of what he could make this is something i guess we could also put as merchandise on our youtube channel i guess oh by the way talking about that sherry is working with um, a couple of guys that have a really nice uh, t-shirt design uh, company and uh, we're going to be meeting with them this Friday it'd be tomorrow actually it's a filming of this so tomorrow we'll be sitting down with them working up a design for t-shirts for my YouTube channel so some of you have said you're interested in that so hang on that's coming look at this uh, mark right here do you see that um, some of you have asked what that is, and it's actually, it's, I, I kind of gravitate to put my coffee cup there a lot. I don't know why, <laughs> which I just do, um, but it's a burn mark. And what happened was um, I like to grill out a lot on the grill, and I like to start my grill with one of these. It's a canister that you put a newspaper in, you light the news, well, you put your newspaper in there, just one sheet of newspaper, put all your charcoal on top, and then you light under the bottom. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. I lit it and I sat it right there. <laughs> uh, and uh, after it got going good, little did I realize that the heat would burn the table. And so, perfect fit, it's not a smoker, it was, uh, product of some good tasting steaks that did that. Hey, today I want to talk to you about not quitting. Um, I know that some of you are probably accomplishing, trying to do a lot of things in life. Um, some of you may be just trying to get by day in, day in and day out. And you know, with the pandemic in America, it has really changed the home life of a lot of people, especially people with young families, where maybe you were used to all your children being at school, now they're all at home and you just feel like as a mom, you wanna quit, you know, oh, whatever kind of thing you're going through. Um, I wanna encourage you today to not quit. You might be going back to college, you might be going to school, you might be uh, taking classes, you might be uh, suffering through a job because if you hang on long enough, a promotion is in the future, but getting there, uh, you just want to quit. Maybe you're working on becoming um, an athlete of, of perfection and you're working on practicing over and over again to become a better this or a better that. And the practice sessions are just so boring or so hard and you just want to quit and give up. Maybe you're going through something in life that um, is a difficult spot for you right now and you're just thinking, I gotta get out of this. I gotta, I need something different. I need to change a pace. I gotta, you know, I gotta quit. I gotta quit this and get out. Well, sometimes quitting is the right thing to do. Um, I've quit back in the long, long ago, back in the old days, I have quit some very nice jobs because I, I, I don't know why. I was uh, frustrated. Um, I didn't like the environment or something. Um, I had in my mind that quitting would be the best solution. I don't think it was, but that's what I had in my mind at the time. When you're young, you think like that, you know. It's like the, the old uh, Johnny Cash song, uh, take this job and shove it. You kind of feel like saying that sometimes, <laughs> uh, but whatever. Um, boy, endurance 
and perseverance really goes a long way. It really does. Um, if you can s start something, and if you have a plan or a goal to get somewhere, and then while you're in the process of getting there, it becomes very hard and very challenging, and you just want to quit. Um, let, me, let me encourage you to hang in there and, and uh, don't give up. Don't quit. Um, uh, little things in life that we achieve oftentimes are missed um, because we oftentimes give up the small things. You know, we just don't want to do it. Sometimes it's a lack of motivation. Um, I've talked to a lot of people during the pandemic and a lot of people said that they've lost motivation for stuff that they used to do. They've lost motivation to be active and, and this or that and they just don't want to do it anymore. They kind of got used to sitting at home on the couch doing nothing or you know giving up a sport giving up an activity giving up a hobby or something you know what don't give up living don't give up life don't quit come on don't quit you can do this uh, we can continue to have coffee together and i will encourage you every day not to quit that ought to be like my theme you know let's don't quit don't quit beekeeping um, let's face it beekeeping uh, is not easy I think sometimes people like myself, other people on YouTube, uh, we make it look easy because we've done it for so many years and we sort of know uh, how to read a hive, what, how to treat a hive, so on, and we sort of make it look easy. You notice today as I went in and had to fix that hive that was the leaning tower of bee, bees, a beehive, um, you know, I kind of made that look easy, didn't I? Um, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't at all. Um, so as you get more experience in life, uh, things don't always become easier. In a sport that I'm involved in, that I spend a lot of time training for, I thought it would be easier. Some parts of it are easier, but doggone it, the better you get, the better you have to get, or someone else is going to beat you. And you just have to keep training and practicing and not quitting. Oh, it's, it's, it can be hard, right? Um, Hanging in there and having perseverance really does have some sweet awards to it. It's rewarding to develop a skill, develop something within you that allows you to keep doing it over and over again and not giving up. Um, that's really great. Sherry, everybody wants you to be on camera. You want to be on camera? No. She says no. I, I saw one of the YouTube comments that said, you know, we want to see more of Sherry, but uh, apparently not, huh? Are you going to? No. Oh, are you just walking by? I am just walking by. Oh, no, you're not. Now you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Wow. What do you have in your hands? S salmon and hamburgers. <laughs> salmon and hamburgers. <laughs> the hamburgers are not wrapped. Is that That's is that right. going to be okay? <laughs> These are my favorite things to eat are salmon. I love salmon. Yeah. Well, uh, Sherry has been voted the most outstanding woman in Champaign County. That was quite an no, achievement. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were too. No, I think I was a runner-up. No, I think you were one of the people selected. That, I don't know. Somebody said you were, but that's great. And you've done so many great things. Uh, you have a college degree in business and leadership. Uh, you've ran businesses. You're a chocolatier. <laughs> um, You've been to so many countries, different countries, travel a lot. Wow, that's, you have quite a, I could go on and on, but it, it, you've got quite accomplishments under your belt after all those years because you never quit, you never gave up. I'm telling people not to quit. And oh. you, you've been married to me for so many years. <laughs> you probably know how many, I don't have a clue. And 40, you, 40, exactly 40. 40, and you've never quit. I've never quit on you. Yeah. I haven't. I know. That's amazing. You're the strength behind what I do. <laughs> I appreciate you not quitting and giving up on me. I did write half that book, though. You know, people think that I wrote the book. And people keep, I keep saying, Sherry and I wrote this book. And they, Sherry and I wrote a book. Sherry and I wrote a book. And they keep saying, I wrote it. Yeah, I know. But actually, we divided it evenly. So 50% of it, I wrote, and 50% Sherry wrote. And what is so amazing, when I read the book, Sherry, I can't tell if I wrote that or you wrote it. Oh, 
Yeah, we do write a lot alike. I don't well, know why. The, our knowledge level is good too because uh, I think some people think because I wear the title of Master Beekeeper that I know more than you do, but you do. no, Sherry is. Sherry knows as much, if not more, than I do. I just repeat what I hear you say. That's all I do. I repeat. I'm repeating that correctly. I'm repeating what that guy said. That's true. That's all we do is repeat what we heard. There's nothing new under the sun. You, we're just repeating what we learn and and so on. But um, anyway, what do you think about not quitting and and persevering? Have you any good words to say to people that might be struggling with quitting, giving up? It's just a matter of waking up every day and sitting up one more time and putting one foot in front of the other and doing what you need to do and yeah keep doing it yeah day after day that's true keep doing it day after day um you you struggle with a few things like arthritis and you've got a knee surgery coming up and those are frustrating to go through aren't they but I don't know if I would put up with as much um, things that you, as you do with those issues. Um, you just don't give up, you keep going. Wow, it's amazing. Okay, well I'm gonna keep on going because I'm still working. Okay. Slash cooking, slash need to go to the pharmacy, mm. slash answering the phones. That's true, I'm, don't quit. I'm not gonna quit. Don't I'm gonna quit. keep working. Don't quit making me suffer. <laughs> that lunch or supper? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Sherry. <laughs> it's quite rewarding when you finally develop within you the ability to not give up. And I love teaching that to my children. When I was raising them, I taught them, you know, don't quit. Don't give up. Keep at it. You know, I know it hurts. My, my dad was always that way. I remember we were sawing a board back in the 60s. Um, either we were real poor or they didn't have them yet, but we had to saw things with a hand saw. I mean, it did not have a motor on it. <laughs> it wasn't a, it wasn't an electric skill saw. It was one of these, rah, 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 you know, and man, my, we were building stuff, garages and everything, adding on to the house. And I was a little kid, you know, like eight or nine years old running that hand saw. And I remember I was getting so tired, my arms were hurting, you know? And I remember I have a brother that's three years older than I am and a sister that's seven years older, but it's always me and my brother out there helping my dad. And I remember saying, I'm dying, I can't do this. My arm hurts so much. And my dad said this to me, he said, David, it hurts just as much when I do it and when Mark does it. It's the same, keep going. Yeah, he's probably right. I thought, okay, well, I just kept on doing it over and over and over again. And uh, finally built up some muscles and strength. But uh, it's really good to have motivation, someone to motivate you, to keep going. You know, it hurts for all of us. When I open up a hive and it's a hot, sweaty day and I'm under a bee suit, it's no cooler and it's no easier for a master beekeeper to work that hive than it is for a brand new beekeeper. It's just as hot for me, and it's just as hard to find the queen for me as it is for you. Come on. Yeah, I get stung just like anybody else does. I just edit those out of the video. <laughs> I remember we were making one video. Boy, I was, uh, I had my, one of my daughters, Cree, I think, was filming. And she was holding the camera. I was into the hive, hat on, just a, you know, hat and a veil. Um, and I was working this hive, and wow something happened and they lit me up i mean they came after me it was terrible and uh i thought maybe i could leave that in there nah <laughs> i mean i i finally had to break break off uh walk away it was so bad but i got back in that hive you know that's the thing got back in there and kept doing it kept working it made another video with a little more smoke <laughs> um so it's fun not to quit uh I, Everybody has the freedom to quit. Everybody is going to stop. You know, everybody else can possibly stop. But if you keep on going, you're the last guy standing. You're the winner. Um, so no matter what you go through life, boy, I'm telling you what, don't quit. You know, be tough. Um,
but put your mind into it and stay with it and uh, don't give up. Be persistent. Um, some of you have asked me what it's like to, what do you have to do to become a master beekeeper, a certified master beekeeper. Um, I'll provide a video link below of a video that I made describing that experience and what you need to do. But, oh, I wanted to quit that so bad. I really did. It was too hard for me, to be honest with you. Um, it was just like, I can't study this much. I can't put this much time. I can't memorize all these chemicals and treatments and temperatures and diseases. And I can't study all these views under a microscope. And, oh, I, why, do I, why am I doing this? I, I, I can't, I got to quit, you know? And like I said in the video, it costs so much money for me to travel and learn things and buy books and microscopes and take the tests and everything. I was running out of money, to be honest with you. Uh, but I did not quit. I knew that I wanted to achieve that position of master beekeeper to help me in my classes and help me have more knowledge to teach you. And I didn't give up. And there's a lot of other things I, I'm doing right now and I'm not giving up on it. When I went into ham radio a few months back, um, the, nat the normal way of you becoming a ham radio operator is that you go to clubs. There's 750,000 ham radio operators in the U.S., um, three quarters of a million people. And you go to a club and there's people at the club that you talk with and you learn from. You go sit down, you go to their little club and, and tell them you're interested and a whole bunch of people will help you. Uh, they're actually called... Elmers, E-L-M-E-R-S, Elmers, people that have been into it a long time and uh, they help other people get started. Well, guess what? COVID-19, all clubs are canceled. Oh, and I, I so I thought, okay, I'll study and uh, I'll, I'll use that time to study and then I'll get, you can't be on the, you cannot be on the air until you get your license. Well, I wanted to be on the air, but I don't have a license. I know the stuff to become a technician but I can't be tested because you, you're tested at local clubs. Oh, phooey. But lo and behold, it was cool because people started working out things uh, to be, so you could be tested remotely. And you can only be tested remotely um, by making sure that these people that test you, they're, I think they're called vectors. Or, yeah, and, and they have to be present to watch you, make sure you don't cheat. How are you going to do that remotely? But there were several sharp people that worked out great plans with cameras and and anyway I took my test remotely I I I think it was kind of through zoom and some of the other software that colleges use to test remotely but I tested uh, out in California remotely uh, for my technician license and then I studied and a week later I got my general license um, and I when I first started thinking about um, the technician license it was hard to study and, and learn all that. And then when I wanted to get my general license, oh gosh, it was really hard. And there was a moment where I thought, maybe I'll wait, maybe I'll study for a year. Cause it's gonna take me a year to learn this. But I didn't quit. I, I think it was a week later, maybe two weeks, but a week later I got my general license. And uh, the next step would be extra, which I am waiting on that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not giving it up, but I wanna get a little more experience and knowledge under my belt before I jump to that, but I'm not going to quit until I do get to, to the top position of an extra ham radio operator. But um, you might, you know, I, I think about that and some people are like, oh, I could never be a ham radio operator or a master beekeeper. I could never achieve these things that just, ah, it's too much for me. Nah, it's not really. It, we're all the same. We really are. You're not born with intelligence any more than anybody else. I don't think so. Um, you might argue that, but I don't think, um, you know, we talk about muscle memory uh, for sports. I don't think so. I think it's something you, you go and you do and you practice over and over again. I think the guy that gets to the top, the win, uh, that has a victory, I think that's a person that just has put a lot of time practicing, studying, doing it over and over again. And I think anybody can do that at any age. That's my position. I'm sticking to it because I'm opinionated doggone it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to stop. That's enough for now. Uh, don't quit. Don't give up. Keep at it. I'm talking to you. You were about ready to quit. I know you were. That's why I made this. I see you there. I see you. Don't quit. Bop. Don't quit. Don't put that down. You keep doing it. <laughs>
I've got to quit because the wind's coming and it's going to be noisy on the microphone. Wow. It's a, it feels good though, it's so hot outside. Thank you for watching everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you. I, I thank you so much for enjoying coffee time together. If you do have a special mug you want me to feature in uh, an upcoming coffee time, feel free to send that to me. Look up our address, uh, honeybeesonline.com and you can find our mailing address on that website and uh, have it shipped to us. Um, and I may feature it in one of our upcoming coffee times. Uh, that'd be cool. And also, please subscribe. We, we need 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I know so many of you are watching and you haven't yet subscribed. How can you not subscribe? You know you like this. All right, I know you do. So subscribe, please. All right, I'll see you next time. Mmm. That's still good coffee. Okay, this is side two. After 24 hours. And this is side one. Side one.